What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. One of the most frequent complaints about Powered Up and all the Control Plus labeled sets is the constant need of a smart device for the control. Even if you create a custom code to use the Powered Up remote, the smart device is required all the time to act as a bridge between the remote and the hub. So, what if I told you there's a solution where you can eliminate the smart device and you can simply control any Control Plus set with the remote? Sounds too good to be true? Well, the magic word is Pybricks. Pybricks is a custom solution for smart LEGO hubs that allows you to run Python-based MicroPython code on all LEGO hubs, including the Boost Move Hub, the City Hub and the Technic Hub. It can control all LEGO motors and use all the available sensors of the Powered Up system. Yes, yet another coding solution after Powered Up. I know most of you want something plain simple that does not include anything similar to coding. I have good news for you. If you can follow a few that simple steps and you can copy paste, then you also have a chance to try this one out without understanding a single line of code. The Pybricks environment gives you tons of possibilities for advanced coding and already has a solid user base, but the specific part I will show you today is still in beta version. Updates are coming frequently, so this might be already included in the next table release really soon. The coding environment of Pybricks runs in your computer's browser, no installation is required. To be able to run custom code on your hub, you need to install another firmware first. Don't worry, this is not permanent. You can install the Pybricks firmware, and if you want to use the hub again with the Control Plus or the Powered Up apps, then you can simply run the usual firmware update process with the Control Plus or the Powered Up apps to have the factory one restored. So, let's see the process itself. As I want to use the Powered Up remote, this requires the beta version as I mentioned, I will have to open the beta.pybricks.com webpage. The stable release otherwise can be found at code.pybricks.com. I open the editor in my browser, and with a long press on the hubs button, I have to wait for the blinking purple light. This means the hub is ready for the firmware update. Don't release the hubs button. Click on the install Pybricks firmware button on your computer. A window should pop up where you should see the hub listed as Lego bootloader. Click pair, and the installation process begins. You can release the hubs button now, it will blink in various colors until the update process runs, you can also see the progress on your screen. After a few minutes the flashing process is finished, your hub will disconnect and will switch to a standby mode with the flashing LED, waiting for a connection. You can either turn it off with a long press on the button, or simply proceed to connect to the computer. If you turn it off, you can turn it on again with a single press. Now the custom firmware is installed, you can connect the coding environment to the hub. Click on the Bluetooth icon, select Pybricks hub from the list and click pair. The LED on the hub will turn solid blue, it is connected now to the computer and ready to run the code. If you made it so far, I can tell you that this was probably the most challenging part of the whole process. From this point we will only use code that was already prepared. The Pybricks team publishes a lot of examples and set specific code on the web page, but there are also contributions from the community, we will use one of those. There are also other useful resources like this YouTube channel for example, I suggest to take a look around if you want to see more code examples. As you saw, our first test subject is the off-road buggy. Go to the project section of the Pybricks webpage, select Technic Hub and then select the buggy. You will also need the powered up remote for this experiment. All you need to do is scroll down to the code part, click on the copy button, then go to the editor and paste the code there. Now click on the play icon to download and run the code on the hub. Since you need the remote as well, tap on the green button on the remote, the LED needs to turn solid white and you are ready to run. Here is the cool part. If you disconnect your computer by simply clicking on the Bluetooth icon, the code is still running and active on the hub. This means you can play with it until you decide to turn off the hub. But even better, you can actually install the code on the hub and run it completely independently. All you need to do is click on the gear icon in the editor, turn on the include current program option and then run the firmware installation process again. This will install again the Pybricks firmware, but this time with the code embedded in it. After the installation is finished, you don't need to connect to the computer anymore. If the hub is in the flashing standby mode, then you only need to press the button once to start the code. If it was turned off, then a single press to turn it on and another one to start the program. Don't forget to press the green button on the remote as well and the buggy is ready to run. To stop the program, simply press the button on the hub once 
and with a longer press you can turn it off. So, how's the experience? The code for the buggy is ok as a start, I would say it is a safe version with slower controls. Since we know what are the buggy's real abilities, I definitely will change some things. First of all, I guess the coder was left-handed, as I prefer the steering on the right and throttle on the left. This is a super simple change in the code, simply replace left with right and right with left for the buttons, simple as that. You see, you are already writing your own code here. The second thing to change is the motor control. Here apparently the motor is regulated by its speed, but as a result there's a weird pulsating behavior as you run the car and it tries to maintain the target speed and it does not actually run at maximum speed. I think using power control is a better way to do this and of course we need full power. I also adjusted some parts for the steering to be more responsive and to return to the center position quicker. You can find the modified code in the article on my webpage, the link is in the top right corner or in the description. Here is the result, with the code embedded in the firmware I really don't need any other devices to run it and it's really fun. Of course there are tons of other things to adjust and add, I suggest to take a look around in the documentation because it's quite detailed, there are a lot of examples and much more is coming soon. Now let's see the Zetros. There's no code published yet for this set on pybricks.com, I took the one for the off-road buggy and changed it to fit this model. The code I use here is also accessible in my blog post. Drive and steering is pretty similar, we need to control two motors for drive instead of one, but that's not a big deal. Now here's the cool part. I use the right red button on the remote to open and close the differential lock. When you power up the model, the differential lock opens by default and that is indicated by the green light on the hub. If you press the right red button on the remote, the differentials will be locked and the LED turns red. Green means open, red means locked. The other red button is also used, but it's more like a gimmick to show some interesting features of the environment. If you press it, you will see the battery voltage in the editor window. It is definitely fun to drive the track around with the remote. I think touch controls really can't beat this experience, even without proportional control. So, this was a little sneak peek about Pybricks and its possibilities. If you are a beginner, you still can use the code made by others for specific sets and simply copy-paste it, but the system is well documented and gives you the possibility to learn and tweak the code. I really suggest to follow the development, I think this environment is a great addition to Powered Up and really extends its abilities. Please let me know your thoughts and experience in the comments. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss my LEGO Technic reviews and other RC videos. See you next time, bye bye!